So my name is Owen Flanagan and I'm an assistant professor of neurology at Mayo Clinic and I'm also an autoimmune neurology fellow here. And um, I'm going to talk about a paper upcoming in the Mayo Clinic proceedings called 18 fluorodeoxyglucose positron emission tomography in patients with active myelopathy. So as an overview of this research study, um, as a background to this, we know that in some patients with spinal cord disease it's difficult to discern what the underlying etiology is. And we know that pathological diagnosis by spinal cord biopsy is quite risky. So therefore, it would be useful to have additional tools that could help us diagnose patients who have spinal cord disease without the need for spinal cord biopsy. So what we did was we looked at 51 patients at Mayo Clinic retrospectively who had an active myelopathy and who also had a PET scan performed. And we had two blinded radiologists review those PET scans and we looked for the degree of agreement with those and we also looked at the findings of the metabolism within the spinal cord in those with lesions within the spinal cord. And what we had was three groups. The first was neoplastic myelopathies, which would include things like lymphoma in the spinal cord, uh, primary tumors of the spinal cord such as astrocytomas, or um, metastatic lesions within the spinal cord. The second group we looked at was inflammatory lesions. We looked at patients with uh, disor disorders like multiple sclerosis, transverse myelitis, or paraneoplastic disease within the cord. And then the third group of patients was a group of patients with neurosarcoidosis within the spinal cord. We only had a small number with, for that group, so it was difficult to make comparisons. But what we found overall was, first of all, that um, radiologists could uh, with a good degree of reliability detect hypermetabolism within the spinal cord and there was excellent agreement between the two radiologists in our study for hypermetabolism within the spinal cord. And what we also found was that hypermetabolism was more common in those with neoplastic than those with inflammatory myelopathies. For clinical practice I think uh, this has some uh, uh, possible implications. Firstly we know that in patients who have spinal cord disease they often undergo a number of investigations such as MRI scans of the spinal cord. They also undergo blood tests, spinal fluid analysis, and um, it would be helpful to have additional tools that may help the diagnosis. And in our study, we found that PET scans may uh, increase the suspicion of a neoplastic disorder within the spinal cord compared to those with inflammatory lesions. So this may be a helpful additional diagnostic tool for patients uh, in the future. Um, although further studies are needed. Our study was a retrospective study and I think in future prospective studies are needed to evaluate these patients and determine, um, and determine if this finding can be confirmed that neoplastic disorders tend to have more hypermetabolism than those with inflammatory disorders. So overall I think our study has a couple of takeaway points. Uh, firstly is that hypermetabolism can be reliably detected among experienced radiologists within the spinal cord. And secondly is that hypermetabolism is more common in patients with neoplastic causes of myelopathy than those with inflammatory causes of myelopathy. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www. Dot Mayo Clinic Proceedings dot org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.